Good morning. Thank you very much for this uh, uh, very welcome invitation. I am Eduardo De Robertis. I teach anesthesiology and intensive care at the University uh, of Perugia in Italy, and I am the uh, president of the European Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care. Well, first of all, I have no conflict of interest regarding this lecture. Well, when I uh, uh, received this invitation and I started to think about the presentation, well, I started to think about what innovation is. Well, if we if we go uh, if you go on if you surf on the internet, there are several definitions of innovation. Uh, I mean, different definitions. But if we go through these definitions, I think that the most frequent words are new and idea. But to when I also reflect a little more, uh, I can also consider uh, an innovation uh, something that has been ignored for for many for a long time, or something that has missed, or also something that has been forgotten. So I think that the concept of innovation is quite broad. And so we can consider innovation on new notions or ideas. So we have considered innovation uh, applied inventions, but also new possibilities and solutions, discovery, um, unexpected connections. Uh, also, innovation is also sometimes imagination and inspiration, but also creativity, also a problem solving can be a, a, an innovation also um, going towards unmet user needs or also new models of uh, um, behavior. We have to speak of patient safety. Uh, and what means innovation in, in patient safety? Well, if we go back and think about milestones of patient safety. Uh, if we think about the, the Swiss cheese, well, I think that is, it was a, a brilliant idea, but more than something that can be considered glamorous. Or if we go to the surgical safety checklist, it's, it's really something that has saved many, many lives, but it's something that I cannot consider particularly exciting. So when we, uh, face the aspects of patient safety. What we have done over the years is just something that I can see like a composition of, of a problem uh, and the analysis of the many aspects that are under the big umbrella of the uh, patient safety. So I want just to uh, jump back of more than 10 years. I mean, we are here, we were here in, in London in 2009 when we gathered um, the, 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 the European Society of Anesthesiology, today European Society of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care, and the, um, the board of anesthesia of the UMS. And we started to reason about uh, safety, patient safety, and we started the work for the Helsinki Declaration that was then seen the one year after in, in Helsinki uh, and was seen first by all the uh, European societies, but thereafter uh, as spread worldwide and was well accepted and received by the majority of the uh, countries. Uh, more than 10 years have, have passed. Uh, over the last two years, we have faced the, the pandemic and we had uh, a lot of uh, problems. So we, for some reason, we have somehow slowed down uh, the, the, the analysis of what has been done over the, uh, over the, the last decade. But uh, I mean, we started to study the, the effects of the LCC declaration. And uh, you see here on this uh, slide, how the majority of the issues that were um, uh, raised by the uh, Helsinki Declaration uh, over the years have been reached a very, very high percentage of uh, success in terms of the institutions that have uh, uh, faced and analyzed these aspects. So it was a, 
I would say a constant meticulous approach, never in the spotlight. So nothing glamorous, nothing so expensive, but still extremely important for our patients. And we have also, as a society, with, with the Helsinki Declaration, somehow anticipated what has been then also um, considered very, very important by the WHO that has launched in 2017, the third global patient safety challenge that was aimed is aimed at the uh, reduction of the arm due to medication. So the vision of the uh, society of, of the European Society of Anesthesia, uh, Anesthesiology and Intensive Care is to uh, establish our society as a leader uh, in, in European patient safety and we're really to stress the, the importance of the implementation of the Helsinki Declaration and to promote the, the highest quality of education and certification. Well, I think that already this vision can be considered innovative. What we do, we uh, in, in really quietly, I mean, in, in a constant way, uh, we work to the for the professional growth, we work for the research, we work for the education of our members and for, for all the uh, European and worldwide anesthesiologists and intensivists. And uh, it, it's very, it's, it, I'm very proud, uh, for instance, that uh, um, two weeks ago, we received the information that a very big uh, research project has been financed by the Europe in, in, in frame of the Horizon Europe 2021. And uh, uh, our society is uh, one of the, the partnership and uh, is involved in the communication and dissemination of the results of this uh, interesting research. So also this means to spread the concept of uh, patient safety. But still, I mean, as a, a scientific society, we, Consider, consider very important the leadership. We consider very important the, the cultures behind uh, what we uh, want to do and what we want to offer to uh, our members and to our community. Well, we have started to, to address the, 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 the problems of the patient safety uh, with the, what is now called safety one approach. Um, this means uh, learning from errors with incident reporting. We have worked on standardization to reduce the variability. We have worked on human factors. So we have worked on many, many aspects. But to be honest, uh, these aspects, fortunately, uh, covered the minority of, uh, of, of, of the numbers of the patients that we treat. Fortunately, the, the unwanted outcomes are very, very low in numbers. So uh, another aspect has been raised, why don't we try to learn from what going well? And so the safety to approach. So what is now doing the uh, European Society of Anesthesiologists and Intensive Care? Well, patient safety is one of our pillar. And we are now working on the uh, PRIPSAIC, is a peer review in patient safety in anesthesiology and intensive care. Uh, we are working on something already well established that is the safer care to save lives. Uh, it's, a, it's a patient safety training program that is um, Europe wide. And then we are also working together with the American Society, with the International Forum on Perioperative Safety and Quality. And it's a wonderful, um, uh, it's a wonderful meetings that really brings together the most brilliant brains worldwide. So coming back to the PRIPSAIC project, what, what, what we want to create is a networks of anesthesiologists and um, intensivists and support them with tools uh, to, to ensure a, a good practice uh, for patient safety. And, and so to provide also uh, what is needed to also to uh, analyze and give solutions uh, for the uh, commitment ahead. Uh, we are now starting in, in four countries. 
um, working with national societies. We have identified the, the hospitals, and then we want to go in a cascade approach. Uh, and so in a way to cross fertilization, the countries uh, in itself, and then um, to, to expand this uh, project to other countries. Uh, I think we have started many years ago, the Safer Care to Save Lives project. Uh, it's, it's, it's an educational program uh, that is, uh, I mean, we try to target uh, multi-professional healthcare uh, providers uh, in different settings. And so we have several, um, uh, I mean, models, I would call, or I mean, several aspects that are covered. Uh, two are very new. We are starting with them. Uh, so first of all, we have uh, a, an essential patient safety course. Then we have also starting now an, an advanced patient safety course. Then we have already established the online uh, health integration simulation master classes that are based on high fidelity. Uh, and then the uh, our safety master classes that are uh, for more experienced uh, participants. Well, the the safer care to save lives uh, essential patient safety course uh, is it's our courses that are um, I mean aimed to improve the, the the patient safety working on human factors to um, analyze the most uh, common strategies. Uh, definitions of LC declaration. And then we pass to the advanced course that are uh, more, um, I mean, on, on with, with what we want to form instructors and students and uh, with uh, simulated scenarios, with a certification that could be also recertificated after five years, with a cascade program in terms of uh, uh, teaching, in, in countries and then expand uh, in Xcade model uh, the, 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 this um, um, educational uh, program. Uh, as you can see, we have already a very uh, crowd agenda. Um, and um, what is interesting for instance is also another aspect that we are um, launching this year it is the um, safety month. We are addressing the obstetric aspects, for instance, in November. 2022, and we, for for each Tuesday of the month, we analyze an aspects. We, we start with clinical cases, then we analyze guidelines. We will meet the experts on the third Tuesday, and then we have the webinar. So in this way, I mean, we want to analyze all the aspects of, of, of uh, a specific team. Last but not least, in June, we will meet in, in Milano, for the International Forum on Operative Safety and Quality. This will be a, a wonderful moment of uh, um, finally face-to-face uh, -face meeting. Uh, so we will have the, the possibility to, uh, to embrace ourselves our, after these uh, months of uh, uh, distance, forced distance. And the International Forum will be um, in the same frame of our uh, European Congress, Iran Anesthesia, that will be in, in Milano from the 4th to the 6th of June. And then also during the, our focus meeting in Barcelona in October 2022, that is mainly focused on perioperative medicine, uh, analyzing the aspects of the myocardium, a lot of, a lot of uh, safety aspects will be also addressed during this focus meeting. So our society is really uh, aimed at, at patient safety. And when we speak of innovation, I think that is a state of, of mind. So it's something that it's really in ourselves. And really, I don't think that innovation should be uh, referred to something of glamorous or uh, anyhow expensive. Thank you very much for your kind attention.